For Australians with severe disabilities and their carers, the National Disability Insurance Scheme promises to be a lifeline. By the time it's fully rolled out in 2019, it's estimated 460,000 people will be enrolled. But already in its launch phase, there are signs that costs are blowing out. Combine that with the federal government's focus on budget cuts and many people with disabilities and their advocates are wary of government reassurances that the scheme will go ahead as planned. Social Affairs correspondent Norman Hermont reports. You get hungry? Hey. The juggling never really stops for single mother Kate Morrissey. If she's not at work, she's looking after her 15-year-old son, William. He's had a developmental delay since birth. He's curious and engaging, but he's also nonverbal and needs constant care and supervision. Raising him has been rewarding, but never easy. I feel like the last 15 years, you know, they've been fantastic, don't get me wrong, and I, I love William, but um, it, it's been an ongoing struggle. It's too hot to have anything hot for lunch. Just a nice sandwich. Kate and William live in Geelong, one of four pilot sites for the National Disability Insurance Scheme when it was launched in July last year. William now has one coordinated NDIS package instead of a patchwork of support cobbled together from different agencies. It's early days, but already there's a big difference. Through the NDIS, there is the potential to have a lot more control over how we also support, and that's a really, really nice feeling. It's an unusual feeling, I have to say. Hello, everyone's here. Yeah. It's an unusual surprise. <laughs> Kate Morrissey is an ideal example of how the NDIS is supposed to work. With the extra support she's getting to look after William, she's once again focusing on her career. She had cut back to four days a week and was thinking of quitting. Now it's full steam ahead. Hardly a week goes by where I don't think I can't do this anymore. You know, I can't keep all the plates spinning. And um, I, I think now with a little bit more extra support, that won't be, you know, that won't be such a severe feeling on Monday morning um, that I'm exhausted and I can't now go to work and be productive and manage a team and be all the things that work requires. Just one hour north of Geelong, in the suburbs of Melbourne, Jason Anderson can only wait. Over nearly two decades, multiple sclerosis has taken a steady toll. He's desperate for an NDIS package, but it could be four years until the scheme is rolled out here. It's like I'm thirsty and the glass of water is just out of my reach. It's um, very, it's very stressful and I, f I try not to uh, think about it each day, but um, it's my life. He lives in supported accommodation with four other people. More than anything, the divorced father wants his own apartment, somewhere his two children could come and stay. But with more and more talk of fiscal restraint in the air, he's worried he may never get the chance. We're going to keep to our election promises, but we're also going to make sure that we live within our means. I watch a lot of um, politics on television and, and I watch them have how they answer questions and I watch them how they behave and I really think that they might say one thing but something else is done and so I'm not feeling very positive at the moment. The government's point man on the NDIS is Senator Mitch Fifield, the Associate Minister for Social Services. He's responsible for the scheme's rollout. I've got to say, um, uh, the Prime Minister, uh, the Finance Minister, the Treasurer uh, and myself, uh, we are all on exactly the same page. Uh, the Treasurer and Finance Minister are as committed to the NDIS uh, as am I. The problem is, early reports show the NDIS is costing a lot more than anticipated. Spending per person so far is 30% more than the government had projected. The NDIS plan for William Morrissey is an example of how the money is being spent. Amongst the items, more than $9,000 to pay for four hours with a carer on the weekends and more than $5,000 to pay for one overnight stay a month away from home. In all, the cost of the total NDIS package for William is more than $35,000 per year. 
at least $15,000 more in services than he was receiving before the NDIS. His mother says the extra spending is worth every penny. I don't think that's a huge cost to have for what that means for me in terms of being able to have a very high quality of life, to be able to work, to be able to actually contribute to the community that I'm part of, uh, I think that's a minimal cost. The latest government estimates are that the NDIS will ultimately cost $22 billion per year, as much as Canberra now spends on defence. Mitch Fifield says despite the growing federal deficit and looming budget cuts, the NDIS money is safe. That is the funding envelope uh, and that is what we are working to. That sounds like you're leaving yourself a bit of room to manoeuvre there. Look, I'm, I'm not trying to be uh, in any way uh, clever with words. Um, uh, we are going to deliver uh, the NDIS uh, in full, uh, and the best estimates that we have uh, at the moment is that in full rollout, uh, the, uh, the magnitude of funding is of the order uh, of $22 billion, um, and that's the funding envelope that uh, we're working in. Jason Anderson still needs convincing. For him, the NDIS holds the promise of a more independent life. We want to be just like um, the average Joe who gets up and goes to work and comes home and has a beer and plays with the kids. And um, we want to just be like everybody else. Hey, Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. But with the federal budget blowing out, when it comes to the NDIS, he'll believe it when he's finally in it. Norman Hermont with that report.